So through this program, you basically can take what would be a $15,000 to $20,000 to $25,000 repair if you had a plumber come in and dig up your lawn and take a pipe out and lay a new pipe. And for $8.99 a month, $10 a month, $12 a month, you can get a $15,000 type of repair, spread it o out over time, spend a mm -hmm. lot less money, and you front load these repairs in the community. So people don't wait until they sell their house and say, oh, now I have to fix that line. They say, oh, I signed up for the service. I'm going to call up, have them televise my see. line, yeah. get it taken care of. Okay. Um, and we are promoting for all the communities on the Sound to do this because we really believe at Save the Sound, based on research that we've done, that this could help a lot with the volume problem. And, and, and you it could. You front end the benefits. Yes. I think it'll reduce the yeah. sewage overflows and you'll get better water quality. And you know what I mean? Just for people watching at home, you know, if you have to have the Roto Rooter man come in every two years, you have a cracked lateral. That's right. You know, that, that's a dead sign that you have a crack lateral. Yeah, because the roots are getting through in on, here. Right, on the top of that. And then they get in deep enough, they block your line, and then Roto Rooter comes through and cuts them that's out. Exactly. But this is still open for rainwater to get mm -hmm. in. And if you have enough pressure in your line, this is open for what we call exfiltration for the sewage in your line to get, get out, out and be contaminating the groundwater around your property. Now, we still have, I'd say, in, in you know, Lodge Mont and Merrick. A few dozen uh, septics. Yeah. Um, it, it, is there a plan to phase them out, or I mean, is it, is it fine if you just have a well-maintained septic system? It's the same as having a sewer system, or, or would we rather? Because what you usually find is usually to bite a water. Yeah. 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 So um, septic systems, if they are well maintain maintained, are great systems for taking care of wastewater. You have um, very low energy usage. Yeah. Um, you're not I impacted if the, you have a superstorm Sandy and the, you know, the power goes down. Okay. You know, your waste is still being treated. You're not having these big bypasses. The key with septic, as we've learned now with the private homes on the municipal system, is maintenance. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know, um, you know where their tanks are and actually how to maintain a system. And usually you, it's a failure before they realize something's not going right. So it is important that people have, you know, periodic inspections and um, keep those systems maintained. And if they do, they should function just fine. Now, there's a couple things I want to touch on. I want to touch on the testing you're doing. But first, I want to talk about, you know, what we did in the town of Mamaroneck is we put a water use fee, yeah. a sewer water use fee uh, in, in place. And you know, as you well know, that, that that is, you know, hopefully going to be a fund that we're going to be able to use to... Uh, you know, to, to maintain our sewers and to, you know, but it's based upon the amount of water you actually use. Yeah. So it encourages people to save water. And, you know, for those people that use a lot of water, restaurants and, you know, they, they were going to be paying more of their fair share. Yeah, that's a great model. And that gets to when we were talking about financing before and I said there's two aspects. That's the long term strategy for going forward and saying, mm -hmm. OK, we need to have our own revenue stream to maintain these systems and keep them in working order and avoid disasters and the huge repairs that come with them. So um, you in town of Mamaroneck are um, leading on a lot of these issues. Uh, Port Chester also has yep. a sewer fee. Village of Mamaroneck is considering one. Um, that's definitely a good strategy. And as you say, it does also um, incentivize conservation, right. which is another important piece of the puzzle. Because when you realize that at the end of the day, us taxpayers are paying for right, the right. treatment and the maintenance of the system, the less extra water we push through it, the longer the l aspects of it are going to last and we're saving ourselves money. What, what, when it started to make sense with, to me is when I thought about, okay, say, you're, say I have a, uh, a, a, sing, a senior citizen single person living in a $500,000 house and a family of five living in a $500,000 house. They're both paying you know, the same sewer tax and obviously one's you know, us using the system a heck of a lot more than the senior citizen living by themselves. So when you start using the sewer use fee, it really evens it out. And you also capture um, nonprofits. Right, you capture nonprofits. Because you're not connecting it to property right. tax, you're it's connecting use it to fee. water usage. So it's, yeah. much, it's much fairer. Yes, it is much fairer. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you talk about the testing? That I, I know you guys did a lot of testing over the last summer. Yeah. So um, one of the uh, really critical pieces to keeping water clean is making water pollution visible. And um, without water quality testing and data, a lot of water pollution goes undetected. It's not like potholes mm -hmm. um, and cracked bridges. So um, the state 
used to do a lot more testing than they do now as, as our governments get smaller, there's less testing. So we are working to put into place um, networks of citizens who can come out and under our training and supervision do regular water quality monitoring at locations um, throughout the region. And we're also working on a website to publish that data and it'll be open source so people can get in there and download the data and mm -hmm. use it for their own analysis. Um, as part of that effort, we're also taking the data that is collected at the beaches, which you can by get. By the county? Yep, yeah. okay. by the county, which you can get through an EPA um, database and we're combining it with some rainfall data mm -hmm. and um, other information about um, you know, how we can figure out the puzzle of where we have water pollution, what the sources might be. So um, I'm kind actually very excited spot. about this tool. It's going to be called the um, Sound Data Mapper. Okay. And um, we hope to be launching it uh, definitely by um, before the recreational season starts, sometime in May. Now, if a person uh, owns a boat and they go out of Mariner Harbor and they go out into the open sound, is it safe to swim in the open sound on a normal day? Yeah, generally, um, when it comes to bacteria contamination, it is it stays near the source. Okay. So most of the outfalls and the contaminated stormwater runoff is near the land. You do have some outfalls that are a little further out in the harbor, like the Mamaroneck Wastewater Treatment Plant has an outfall that's out in the water. Um, but in general, that uh, the hot spots are near the source, and then it, it yeah. gets cleaned up. It gets... Um, uh, disinfected by UV, by the light, and it gets dissolved. So n further away from the shore is always a safer bet for um, better yeah. quality the, water. The, the problem we've always had in the village of Mamaroneck too is that you, know, you have a narrow entrance to a harbor yeah. and then, you know, it, it doesn't flush with the velocity of you know yeah. somebody else. Yeah, and that does make a difference and yeah. we're seeing that a lot of the problems with the high nitrogen levels and the um, low oxygen dead zones, the hypoxia, are, are more acute in the harbors and embayments. And another um, worrisome um, impact of those concentrations of nitrogen is losing the wetlands, the coastal yes. wetlands, the saltwater marshes, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, ironically, they are cleaning the water and making the mm -hmm. water better. But if you have too much nitrogen and they die off, not only do you lose that cleaning uh, benefit, but you also lose a lot of the buffering Wait, for floods so the and waves. So nitrogen can kill the wetlands? Seagrass, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's killing the seagrass, and it's recently been discovered that high nitrogen level also tracks with ocean acidification. So where we have high nitrogen and we have clusters in some of these embayments and harbors, um, you're having acidification so that the, um, the shellfish are having a hard time forming okay. thick shells, and that starts to stress the aquatic um, ecosystem as well. We'd kind of, uh, tr trying to have more shellfish in the water, would that help clean it? I mean, would Yeah, so um, bivalves are great um, Bivalve filter, muscles, filters of um, contaminants, yep. So keeping it to, you know, keeping the nitrogen low enough so that the bivalves can live, and they're very good at taking out bacteria, and they take out, um, you know, solids, uh -huh. and um, they're, they're nature's great um, water yeah. cleaners. Yeah. Okay, um, we, we've got about five more minutes, so I just want to touch upon how can the average citizen get involved? Yeah. Because we have a lot of uh, ecologically minded citizens in this community. Yeah. So how could they get involved with Save the Sound and helping to clean up the water? Yeah, so you are, you do have a wealth of um, educated and engaged citizens. I think that's what attracts yes. people to this community, to live on the Sound. So, um, well, I would encourage everybody to um, do what they can around their personal property. So. Um, try and keep storm water on your property and don't okay. have it just flash out into the road and the catch basins. Um, try to have rain gardens. Um, minimize your fertilizer use. Let's try not to add any extra nitrogen. I was way ahead of the curve on that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I Good. always just left the clippings where they were. Yep. Uh, yep. God's That's a great process. Pro yep. so Absolutely. My laziness paid off after all those. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. If, you, if you let it do its own thing, a lot of our learning these days is realizing the natural systems that were already in place that we've improved on okay. were actually um, good on their own. Okay. Um, so doing that, in terms of Save the Sound, um, we are always looking for more members. The more members that we have, the more clout it gives us when we go out and talk about these issues when I'm up in Albany. Um, or when my colleagues are in DC, it helps to say, you know, we have thousands of members and people really love the sound. So I encourage people to, to sign up for that, to join our mailing list, to stay informed. 
And then for the people who want to go really deep, um, we are definitely interested in volunteers to for do the, testing. The, the testing in the summer sampling program. And we also are um, always interested in reports, pollution reports. So um, what we call our watchdogs. So people who are out in the community and see an overflowing manhole uh -huh. or see a pump station that's, that's doing a bypass or is having a leak, um, to photograph those or videotape and email me and say, this is what I saw and when I saw it and where I saw it. That helps us to track where the problems are in the infrastructure and make reports um, to people who can come in and do those repairs. And what, just, let's just have your website address. I think so I can put it on the screen, www? Savethesound.org. Okay. And I can be reached with any um, pollution reports or interest in volunteering at T. Brown at savethesound.org. T. Brown T. at savethesound.org. Yeah. And you guys now have an office located here in the village of Mamaroneck at? We do, at um, 145, um, right, right, Tompkins? yeah, right behind um, Boston Post Road on Tompkins Ave. On Tompkins Ave. And um, we're actually hiring. For those who know Mamaroneck, that's where the old uh, antique building used to be there, uh, in the yep. triangle. Yeah. Yep, we're in that space upstairs, and I'm hiring a full-time um, staff member to run our water quality sampling program. The past two summers, we focused on the Mamaroneck Harbor sub-watershed, okay. but this summer we're going to do the whole Westchester coastline. Okay, up from Port Chester down yep. to Pelham. Yep, so we're very excited about that, and we're also setting up our own lab, so we'll be able to, to do to our do own test? Um, samples. Yep, so we have another room really? in that building where we'll be having a lab. Yep. And, and how, how was the turnaround on the sampling? It's 24 hours. Oh, wow, that's going to be fascinating. Yeah, so that's really exciting, and um, we're hoping, we put in for a grant, um, hopefully it'll come through this summer, but if not soon, um, where we're going to be engaging high school students to have um, okay. students also joining our sampling, and, you know, if that doesn't happen this year, definitely by next year, that's in our wish list. I know Mamaroneck High School has an ecology club. Yeah. So they, they, that would seem to be your prime audience for this. Yeah. You know, the tricky thing is the sampling is during the summer vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it doesn't really work to do it with the teachers. So you have to make an extra effort to identify kids. students in yeah. the summer. So it's a little more, okay. a little more organization. Well, everybody's always looking for something to put in a college resume yeah, around so here. Yeah, so that's what we're you know. hoping. Yeah. The other nice thing is when we have the um, Sound Data Explorer website available, during the school year, students and teachers will be able to go to the website and download all, all kinds of data of, that we've collected and that we've assembled from other sources and learn and do, do studies around the health of the sound just using that tool. Now, just, just before we, we, we end here, uh, we talked a little bit before about uh, going to Albany and trying to lobby the governor. Uh, is there a way people could help? Yes, so we just sent out an action alert, an email, um, with a sample letter that we'd like people to copy and paste into the, um, the emails for the governor that are on his website. So you can go to the Save the Sound website and look for that. You can sign up for our mailing list. Yes. And we're really, you know, the governor needs to hear from people that they yes. care about wastewater. There's a lot of competition for these resources and we need to make a lot of noise between now and April 1. And if, you, if you're hearing the sound, sure, getting this money will directly affect your tax rate. Yes. So this, this, is money this will that you be should grants, have for your own, not you know, loans. Yes. These will be grants to come yes. in and help us deal with some of these long-standing issues that are just waiting in line for repair. So please, even if you're not, you know, you know, ecologically minded for your own, you know, benefit, write the governor and ask him for this money because the work has to be done. Yeah. Or give him a call. It also these type of infrastructure yeah, prob projects are great for jobs. <laughs> you know, they employ people. Yes, they, they clean do. the water and. Um, and if we can get the state to help us, they'll save and, us all And money. as you pointed out before so well, you know, it, it, it's so much cheaper to do it now than to do it later. Yeah. Because, you know, it, delay just costs more and more and more money. Yeah. It, yeah. An emergency basis is the most expensive way to do things. Yeah. I mean, you see it around the county collapsing roads yep. where, you know, pipes fail, and then it's a much, much bigger bill. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we, we have to end here, but uh, I just want to say thank you to Tracy. And... Uh, Please get involved uh, with Save the Sound, and as we pointed out, please write a letter to uh, Governor Cuomo asking him to help us out with the, this amazingly expensive infrastructure repair that's vital to our health, safety, and welfare. Thank you very much, and until next time, I'm Tom Murphy.